Suppose we had an electric field vector that looks like this. Well, notice this electric field vector it has one component that's parallel to the surface and one component that's perpendicular to the surface because it has both um, horizontal and vertical components. So which is the component that's parallel to the surface or perpendicular to the surface? So this would be the component of E. Well, is this the component of E that we want to pay attention to or drop? Yeah. We don't want to pay attention to this component of E because this component of E is just moving along the surface. So this is the component of E that we need. Well, how would we find this here um, using this angle? We can find this angle between E and the A vector. Well, do we want to use the cosine or the sine then? Cosine. Cosine, that's right. So here we have yet another definition of the electric flux. And this is, I'm sure, something that you've seen in class. So now we could say this is the, mag the overall magnitude of E times the overall magnitude of A times the cosine of theta. Maybe I should write it like this, though. Is that the same as saying um, E dot? And you're already starting to mention even a fourth way. That's right. So we'll get to that in a second. But there's a fourth way as well. This is usually written E A cosine theta, but maybe it's better to write it this way because the point here is that we're using the cosine to get just the, co the correct component of E. All right, well, the, the key thing is usually what in, in physics, people tend to focus on the angle. So, so what is theta? Theta is the angle between the E vector and the A vector. That's important to have in your notes. Theta is the angle between the E vector and the A vector. That's why we had to learn what the A vector was so we would know what this theta is. We could have focused on a completely different angle. We could have focused on the angle that the electric field is making with the surface. To me, that would be more intuitive, to focus on the angle that the electric field is making with the surface. But that doesn't turn out to be the conventional way to do physics here. The conventional way is to focus on the angle that the field makes with the normal to the surface. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you focus on the angle that E is making with the normal to the surface, then you need the cosine, um, because we want uh, the component of E that's parallel to the normal, because that would be the component that's perpendicular to the surface. So now we can talk about the idea of a dot product. A dot product is something that's defined as the, the dot product of two vectors. Well, the whole purpose of a dot product is to get just the component of one vector that is parallel to the other vector. If you want to get just the component of one vector that's parallel to the other vector, you use a dot product. And we just kind of proved that the way to get the component of x that's parallel to, that is parallel to y is to take the cosine of the angle between x and y. So theta here would be the angle between x and y. We basically just proved here that if you use the cosine of the angle between two vectors, you would just get just the component of x that is parallel to y. So anytime you want to multiply two, the magnitude of two vectors, but you only want to pay attention to the component of one of the vectors that's parallel to the other one, that's when you use a dot product. Well, that means... that yet a fourth way to write this, as you were mentioning earlier, is as a dot product. The dot product here means that we want to multiply the magnitudes of these two vectors, but we only want to use the component of E that is parallel to A. And the way you can do that would be by multiplying E by the cosine of the angle between E and A. All of this only makes sense if we remember that mathematicians have defined the A vector as a vector that is normal to the surface and that has the same and that whose magnitude is the area of the surface. Incidentally, the electric flux is a scalar. Even though it's based on vectors, it's a scalar. Any dot product is a scalar. Any dot product is a scalar. It doesn't have a direction. In fact, sometimes this is called the scalar product. So this is a scalar. It doesn't have a direction, even though it's based on vectors. It just has a magnitude given by this, this right here. So
So um, what could we say about the electric flux? So let's put a... Uh, So let's say that we're in an area with a uniform horizontal electric field. We've got a uniform horizontal electric field. What can we say then about the electric flux through this space? Is it positive, negative, or zero? Can you ask that one again? If there's an electric field that's horizontal, now this is a uniform electric field through this entire region of space. I'm not going to draw the electric field lines everywhere, but you should imagine this extending through this whole region of space. Okay. Well then, what is the electric flux through this right-hand face of this cube? Is it positive, negative, or zero? Positive. Yeah, because the electric field lines are exiting the cube over here. So over here, the flux is positive through this face. How about this left-hand face? How about the left-hand face of the cube? Is the electric field here positive, negative, or zero? Negative. Yeah. Here, the electric flux would be negative for this face. By the way, the way you would see that mathematically is the electric field lines here look like this. Um, so what's the angle between E and A? Zero. That would be if they were parallel. What's the angle between E and A if they're anti-parallel? Oh. What do we call the angle between two vectors that are anti-parallel to each other? Uh, 180. Yeah, didn't sound too confident about that, but that's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, when two that's in the process of seeing it, but yeah. yeah. When two vectors are parallel, the angle is zero. But when two vectors are anti-parallel, the angle is 180. Yeah. So here, theta would be 180. Well, what's the cosine of 180? Do you remember what that is? Cosine of 180? One. Negative one. Negative one. And that's, where, how, that's how mathematically you can see that this flux is negative. Mm -hmm. So this formula would tell us mathematically that this flux is negative, because when we put in cosine 180, we'd get a negative one. And then we'd multiply it by two positive um, magnitudes. Oh, I'm going to erase this electric field line because this is not consistent with my new example. I said now that the electric field lines are all horizontal, so let's get rid of this. Okay, now let's come back to over here. You already said that the electric field flux over here was going to be positive. And that's right. We know that because the electric field lines here are exiting. Uh, but how can we confirm that mathematically? Well, what is theta over here? What's the angle between the electric field line and the A vector? Zero. Yeah, because these are parallel, so theta is zero. And what's the cosine of zero? Uh, zero is one. Positive one. Okay. Well, then now we confirm that here we have a positive flux. Okay. Here the cosine of zero is positive one, in contrast to over here where the cosine of 180 is negative one. So this formula would give us the correct sign for the flux. Okay. I don't want to emphasize that too much, though, because there was a much easier way to get the sign of the flux, just using our common sense. Yeah. We can see here that the electric field is exiting the cube, so the flux should be positive. And we can see here that the electric field is entering the cube, so it should be negative. Um, so actually, I would really only use this cosine as a backup, because I think it's really easy to make mistakes focusing on this data. Um, over and over in this course, we've mainly used our common sense to get the correct positive and negative signs. Mm -hmm. I think we can still do that here. When an electric field is exiting a surface, that is considered positive flux. And when it's entering the surface, that's considered negative flux. And this should just be used as a backup to confirm what we already knew.